What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are jumping right into the 350Z build series that I introduced in the last video. And today we need to get the stereo installed so we can get the seats, harnesses, and new quick release installed in the next episode. So let me show you what we've got and where we're getting started today. So today we're gonna to be installing one badass sound system in the Z to make this thing the ultimate party car out of the track. All of the stuff is from Pioneer, or at least all of the main components are, not the accessory stuff that we need to install it. Got a Pioneer doubled in setup that we're gonna be putting in the car. It does have CarPlay, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. Got a five channel amp to power the four speakers and sub. And speaking of speakers and our sub, we've got a 10 inch sub that we're gonna be putting in the back in the spare tire well so that it can stay in while we're drifting. Six and a half inch speakers for the rear and then component speakers up front. And as we go through and do this install, I'll explain a little bit more of what these things are when we get to them. Now, unfortunately, after I finished filming the last video, I realized some more interior pieces have to come out and it's gonna be kind of a pain. Let me show you. So as you can see, I popped off the speaker grill on this back plate behind where the seats go and was unfortunately greeted by the fact that you cannot remove the speaker without removing that whole plastic cover, which means the harness bar has to come out. So before we do anything today, I'm gonna get all of this stuff taken out, remove the old speakers, and that way we have a completely clean slate to lay down our fresh wiring. All right, so after taking out damn near half the interior, I th think we are finally ready or at a point where we could put speakers in. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is get all of our wiring laid. And what I think I'm gonna do, because usually when I put a car stereo in, I'll run some of the wires down the center console and back. That's not gonna work in the Z because of how everything meets up here. There's no room for wires. So you can see I got a little bit of a head start on the power wire to the battery in the battery compartment up here the other day while I was bored out in the garage. I'll show you that here in a second. And then what I'm gonna do is run our speaker wires and RCA cables back under the dash over here and then down the side, up through here and into where the amp is over there. Now, generally speaking, when you're doing car stereo, you wanna keep the power wire separate from the speaker wires just to avoid any sort of noise in the audio. So I'm gonna be running this down the passenger side of the car completely by itself. And what I'm gonna try to do is utilize, there's a factory kind of wire retainer thing here that doesn't have any wires in it that runs all the way back along here. So I'm gonna try to tuck that all the way through there. It'll go up and then we have our amp back in here in this compartment. I'll get some better light and show you guys that here in a sec. So I've got my RCA cables back here, a two channel 15 foot and a four channel 15 foot, four channel for the speakers, two channel for the sub. I don't think I'm gonna need the whole 15 feet. Uh, so I wanna pull these out and see how much of that that I do need. And then I have my speaker wire up here. So I need to get this out and see how much of this I'm gonna use. And I bought this kind of expandable snakeskin sheath for wire that I wanna put over this stuff. And I think it's a bit ambitious to try to put all of this in one bundle. But I think what I'll do is put the speaker wire in one and the RCAs in the other. But I need to figure out how long this wiring needs to be running from back where the head unit is to the amps. All right, so I ran one of the 15 foot RCAs, how it's gonna be run through the car. So it comes along through here, down the driver's side door, back up and into the stereo. So why I did this was because I wanted to confirm how much extra I have with this. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of slack. So what I'm gonna do is cut this 50 foot roll into four pieces for the speaker wires are gonna be running the same route as the RCAs. And that way we'll have four 12 and a half foot sections and we can start running all the wires through the car. So I made this beautiful wire loom of all the speaker wire that's gonna run from up by the head unit all the way back to the amplifier. Got it tucked into this wire cover all the way, heat shrink on both ends, 
and a little bit of extra wiggle room for where we're gonna connect these up to the head unit and same on the other end for where they need to go to the amplifier. So the next thing I need to do is get the wires on here connected to these, which are gonna connect to the factory wiring harness. And so what this is doing is connecting, obviously these wires here, these go back to the amplifier. So once we connect the RCAs to the head unit, that's gonna run back to our amplifier and then all of our sound will run through here and back into the speaker where it will come out of, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these connected while we're out of the car. And when you buy the wiring harness that's meant for your car, it usually has on the back there what is what. So you can look here like left rear negative is green and black. So that's on this harness here. And I went through and marked each of these so I knew which wire was which on both sides. And now I'm gonna go through and get these connected. And I found these super cool. It's like a solderless connection. So there's actually solder in here. And when you hit it with a heat gun, it'll melt down and connect the wires super nicely. We use these on my sister's car recently and I loved how they work. So we're gonna be in good shape here. They're super, super clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those all connected. And I just made the very unfortunate realization that the blue amp turn on wire, which is this stuff here that needs to run from up by the head unit back to the amp to tell the amp to power on, should have probably been run through this harness here. So I really hate to do it, but I'm gonna cut right at these connections here, take off the shrink wrap here and try to feed that through because that's the right way to do it. So we gotta go take a few steps backwards before we take a few steps forward. A little surgery time. So I ended up having to just pull the cover completely off to run the blue wire through, but got everything back together. Heat shrink on both sides, blue wire coming through and got these connected again. So now I need to get the, I believe it's the front ones. Yep, front left, front right, attached to this harness. So on the 350Z, there's two different harnesses that plug in for the speakers. So we're gonna get our speaker wires connected to these four wires here. And then we need to tie in some of these wires from this harness that goes to the stereo, which is like illumination and some of the other stuff. So the red, orange, yellow, we're gonna get all that connected. So a little more, a little more soldering or solderless soldering. I am so happy with how this turned out. The wiring's super clean, got it nicely organized. So we need to get this installed into the car and run this side back to where the amplifier is gonna go. And then we've gotta do the second RCA as well. I did decide I'm not gonna put those in this same cover. I, don't, I just don't think it's necessary with these. So we're gonna get the two RCAs and the speaker wires all wired up and start looking at getting the amp mounted. Super happy with how I was able to get the wire tucked over here, running through that OEM wire holder that I was telling you guys about, and run up through here into where the amplifier is. So we get this pulled back, carpet put on, and we'll deal with the amplifier and speakers next. All right, got one speaker in, just did a test run basically for this side over here. But one interesting thing is that the previous owner, whoever installed the previous stereo, didn't use the factory wiring and they had them wired directly to the amps, which I definitely think was causing some issues because as long as I've owned this car, these back speakers never worked. So we're gonna cut this off, put on some connectors down here and install the new six and a half inch Pioneer speaker back up here. And then we'll start looking at getting the head unit and other speakers in.
right, so now I want to start taking a look at getting our head unit mounted. We're going to be using this Pioneer Double Din. This is an 8100 NEX. This is a little bit older model. I think I pulled this out of one of my other cars when I replaced it with a newer model at some point. But need to get this mounted up to these factory brackets. Unfortunately, when I pulled out the other radio over there, there were just no brackets. So I had to buy these off of eBay. But these get mounted on the side here. And then we've got this plate that goes around the front and into the trim. So I'm going to get this all assembled, look at getting our RCA cables connected back here. So the RCA cables are what run from the head unit back to the amplifier to feed signal. And then from the amplifier, those go back out to the speaker wire to play your sound out of the stereo. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started, get it loosely mounted up, and then we will keep moving on and get the other speakers installed. All right, so we got the head unit tightened down in there, loosely mocked up, got both of our speakers in the rear. And before I start taking off the door cards to get the front speakers in, I do wanna get this amp situated back here. So I've been trying to figure out which way I want to mount this. And for those of you who are curious what I'm using for an amplifier, this is a Pioneer five channel amplifier. Uh, this is gonna power all four speakers and then it has a separate channel for the subwoofer. Uh, if you're familiar with car stereo, you can do this one of two ways. You can have a four channel amp and then another single channel amp which is what I've done in most of my cars, but because I want to conserve space and weight in the Z, this five channel is a perfect way to go. So I've got all the wires running through here and I was just trying to decide which way I wanted to orient everything. And I have the wires kind of loosely coming through. They're just coming up through the bottom here. But what my plan is, is to drill out holes here and use grommets to run the wire through. And I was just trying to figure out which side I wanted everything to come through. But one of my limiting factors is the speaker wire. So I did 12 and a half foot run of this. And if I did it on this side, I think it would just reach. But to allow myself a little bit of slack, what we're going to do is mount the amplifier this way. Our RCAs are going to come in on the left side. Power and speaker wires are going to come in on the right side here. So what I'm going to do is get this mounted to this plate here. I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. And then from there, we can start working on getting our wiring to come through the sides of this in a super clean way. All right, so major progress update. Got the amp sitting in here. All the wires are run, so I need to get the RCAs hooked up. Need to cut and strip these wires down for the speakers, get those plugged in on this side over here, as well as the power and ground wire. So I'm gonna probably start with these and then work my way around to get everything connected here. And I do have the head unit out as well, just to confirm that we get the RCA cables plugged in to the right spots from here, back to the amplifier. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stuff connected and then we'll start working on the speakers. And then we'll start working on the front speakers. Got the amp all wired up. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm super happy with how the wiring turned out in here. Got everything ran nice and cleanly. So that's all set up. Head unit is officially mounted with the plate that's gonna go between it and the dash to close the gap there. All that wiring's done. I ran the cable down here that connects the USB for a phone. So we're gonna go ahead and run that up into the center console here. Get this thrown back in the car and then it's time to start looking at getting the door cards off so we can replace the front speaker and the tweeter up here and actually test this system out. So we made some good progress last night, but ran into one major issue. The speaker would not fit in this stock ring here. So the solution, 
was to get these aftermarket rings that the speaker does fit in. It's gonna take some modification. I'm gonna to have to trim these inner pieces off here to make the six and a half inch speaker fit in it, but this is our solution. So we're gonna go ahead and get the speaker mounted to that. Now, what we've got going on here, this is a set of component speakers. So from the amplifier, it goes into this crossover here and then it distributes the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies to the speaker. So the microphone died. So I just went ahead and started working on getting one of these rings ready. But what I did was I cut off these two ears, this one and this one here smooth them out with the Dremel and then cut off all of the internal tabs here. And then our speaker now fits in there as it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one completely modified to fit the speaker as well. Add on the new speaker wire with the matching black speaker wire and get this one fit into the passenger side and then we'll start working on the driver side. Hell yeah, I am so excited how this turned out. So got everything mounted up here. The install is super clean. We've got the wire coming from the, what they call the woofer down here, coming up to the crossover, tied into our factory harness. Everything looks super clean. So I'm gonna leave the door card off because once we get the other side done, we're gonna plug everything into the battery and actually be able to test the system. And I wanna make sure everything's working before I put anything back together. So I'm gonna show you how to do everything on the other side. So this side's a little bit easier, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the door card off and then we'll get all of our new speaker set up wired in. So this tweeter is the part that I was saying that we can take apart this whole outer shell as it comes from Pioneer and get it down to this size so that it actually fits in the stock location here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start just taking this apart, getting this in here and we can get this fit up and get the driver's side finished up. With the driver's side speaker all in, we have one more thing to do before we can get the system connected to the battery and finally test it out. And that is run the subwoofer wire. Now I didn't have the wire yesterday, so unfortunately we have to do a little backtracking and pull the amp out to run that subwoofer wire back to the spare tire well where the subwoofer is gonna go. Now I'm super excited because I found a guy that, that makes a subwoofer box that fits in the spare tire well here, which is super rad because I can keep it in there while we're drifting and it's not gonna go anywhere. So my plan is to run the wire in through that hole there back into where the amplifier is. So we just gotta go ahead and run that. So like I was saying, unfortunately, we have to take a few steps backwards here to get this out enough that I can drill one more hole for a grommet for the subwoofer wire. I should have just done that to begin with, but uh, I wasn't thinking that far ahead, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to disconnect this side, disconnect the power wires, but leave all the speaker wires hooked up because those are the most difficult to get connected. And then we should be able to pull this out enough that I can see back there and feed a wire through. We are officially moments away from testing out the stereo. The last thing that I need to do now that the subwoofer wire is ran is get the whole system hooked up to the battery. So let me show you what we gotta do real quick. So I've got the four gauge wire that's running from the amplifier that we need to get connected to the positive side of the battery. And what I'm gonna do is run it back up around here and it's gonna connect to this terminal over here. But we do need to put our fuse in line here and they recommend doing that within six inches of the battery. So I'm just gonna mount it to the inside of this wall here and we'll have our wire go in through there, come out the other side and connect to the battery.
All right, moment of truth. I've got everything wired in over here, going through the fuse, connected to the positive side of the battery. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Got windshield wipers. Oh, we've got the stereo. All right, let's see if everything works. All right, so everything's working as it should. Got the phone connected, CarPlay is working. Confirmed all four speakers are working. So now what I wanna do is steal the subwoofer out of my blue Subaru. So unfortunately I don't have the subwoofer box that's gonna be going in the spare tire well here. It's being made right now, but in the meantime, got the cord run. I'm gonna pull the subwoofer out of that car, put it in here just to confirm that everything's working like we want it to be. And let there be bass. So got that plugged in. I left plenty of slack on there so we can get this cut down to wherever we want it for. The actual subwoofer box that's gonna be going in here Again, this is just for test purposes. I'm not gonna leave this giant box back here. Woo! Well, now that we know that everything works as it should, it's officially time to get this put back together. So I'm gonna start with the door cards and then work my way through the interior, getting everything reinstalled to complete this job. and we have officially got the interior all back together. I am super excited to have this stereo in the car and finally get to enjoy it. Like I said, I've had these parts sitting for such a long time now, but more importantly, now that the stereo is installed, the interior is officially ready for the new seats to go in. And just to give you a little sneak peek, I set one of the seats in here just to get an idea of what it looks like, but we're gonna be getting those installed along with the new bride rails and new LZ MFG Yashio factory harnesses and quick release steering wheel in the next video.